chutzpah. I was still among the walking wounded. Regardless, I made a date with a lovely girl I used to work with, only to bail out painfully late. I probably sounded drunk. I called from a phone booth inside Tierney's bar. Rod Stewart wailed Bangy May in the background as I claimed I was coming down with a bug. This is how you do things when you're an asshole. Sorry. The next call I made was to Donna, a college friend. In our junior year, we worked together on the quarterly, the school's literary magazine. I was editor-in-chief and she poetry editor. Though we insisted lofty titles didn't matter, we were quietly snooty. She had a crush on me, but I was with a forever girl at the time. After a raucous staff dinner, Donna and I had walked out together. Apropos of nothing, I hoisted her over my head, then spun the little thing around, her arms and legs splaying apart like helicopter blades. After a couple of turns, I gently set her back on her feet. I think our pas de deux surprised us both. As she staggered to straighten out her skirt and blouse, we laughed, then went our separate ways. Did it happen like that? Had I been endowed with superpowers, albeit temporarily? That was when we were on the green side of our twenties. Now there was just a sliver of daylight between us and thirty. Did she remember that night? I wanted to reconnect with her right then. On the rebound from my marriage breakup a month earlier, I worried that she'd sense my enthusiasm as desperation. But it was just a date, not a commitment. Besides, she had quickly said yes. The date evolved as a mini reunion with half a dozen mutual friends from school. Neglecting them, Don and I caught up with each other. She had worked as a modern dance teacher in a Tony private school, then answered an inner voice, the one that said, become a rock star. My inner voice was Edward Thard Munch's shriek. I kept that to myself. Too complicated. We shared the Cliff Notes version of our failed marriages. Her ex-husband was a jerk. My ex-wife didn't understand me. After our dinner party ended, I walked Donna home. So, what do you want? She asked. I mean, for real. That's a good question, I said. In that moment, I remembered a time of pro profound happiness as a kid. After a long and anxious separation, my family was reunited. The Japanese shop girl, the American soldier, and me. We started fresh in America. Despite adversity, I believed good fortune would come to us. I didn't know what would happen next, but rather than fearing uncertainty, I sensed adventure and welcomed it. Maybe that's what I wanted now, to recover that fearlessness, that pluck, that chutzpah. I have this theory. We're born with optimism, like the albumin in an egg that nourishes a forming life inside. As that reservoir of optimism runs out, we're supposed to make it on our own. With, without it, what's the point? I couldn't describe it to Donna. Anything I said would fall short. You'd have to write a book to tell it right. Instead, because I didn't answer, the long silence struck us as comical. Maybe it was a giddiness of a first date. I laughed like lightning bolts were bursting around me. Fireworks. Donna's eyes shimmered 
two oceans of blue. I wanted to tell her everything, but resisted. I considered saying I was sorry, not for anything I had done, yet. We had been dating for just three hours. I thought I might apologize in advance for what I would eventually do. The idea of preemptive, preemptive apologies seemed brilliant, but weird. I decided to wait until I actually did something reprehensible. It rarely took long. This is me being an optimist. I took Donna's hand. She didn't resist. Who was holding on tighter? I couldn't say. You didn't tell me what you wanted, she said. You first. Tell me what you want, I said. Donna was mulling it over when I began to hear faint but familiar rumbling, like a typhoon or a runaway train. It was still far away. Did you hear that? I asked. But she was still pondering the previous question. Hmm, what do I want? I know it sounds crazy, she said, but I could really go for some Japanese. What did she mean? I wasn't sure. Regardless, I felt grateful. We had time. We had time to figure it out for real.